Welcome to the Canadian edition of The Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. Where would we be if we hadn't had Andrew's teaching? It has just really like given me so many revelations. He filled me with a new vision of myself. I'm so grateful that he has been obedient to the calling that God has placed on his life. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Thursday's broadcast of The Gospel Truth. This week, I've started a brand new series entitled How to Find, Follow, and Fulfill God's Will. And I tell you, this is one of the most exciting things to me. This is what the Lord used in the beginning to get me to seeking Him. I knew He had a purpose for my life, and I just didn't know how to get there. I didn't know how to discern what it was. And so I began a process, and this is what led me to this miraculous encounter that I had with the Lord in 1968, was I wanted to know God's will for my life. So it actually jump-started my whole relationship with the Lord. I'd been born again for 10 years at that time, but that's when I got serious and God showed up. So I've got a book on this that has some great things. This is one of the most important things that you could ever learn is how to find, and then finding God's will is important, but then you got to find out how to follow it and not try and do God's will in your own strength and power. I'm going to use Moses as an example of a person who totally blew it in this area. And then how to fulfill how to finish well. Anybody can start well, but how to finish is more important than how to start. And so anyway, this is just a great teaching. For this book, this is a 290-page book. We are asking for a donation of some amount for this. If You know, we'll put out close to 100,000 of these books through these programs, and if no one gave, I wouldn't be able to do that. So please do what you can do, but if for whatever reason you just say, I can't give a thing, you can call in and ask for this little booklet that is a 50-page summary of this larger teaching. And then we also have study guides that will go into each one of these three areas, how to find, follow, and fulfill. We have DVDs, USBs, and CDs that will go into this. And so at the end of the program, we'll, we'll put out all that information. The first three days of this week, basically what I was just trying to do is to establish that it's not up to you to do what you want to do and then ask God to bless it. But instead, God has a specific purpose for every one of us, and it didn't come to pass after you were an adult. I use Psalms 139 that before you were even born, when you were still an embryo, the exact word that's used in uh, the Hebrew language in Psalms 139 verse 16, when you were still in your embryonic stage, God had written in a book, what every day of your life should be. And then I use Paul out of Galatians 1.15 to say that he said that he was separated under the gospel from his mother's womb, not just on that day on the road to Damascus when God showed up, but from the beginning, God had a purpose and he finally realized what it was. And then Jeremiah chapter 1, that God touched Jeremiah and said that before you came forth out of the belly, before you were formed in the womb, I sanctified you and ordained you to be a prophet unto the nations. And so the first three days have just basically been trying to say that God has a plan for your life. It's up to us to figure out what that plan is. And God wants to reveal it to us more than we want it. Now, that's really important. If you've listened to the first three days, you could get to a place of desperation like, oh, God, well, if you've got a plan, how do, I, how do I find out what it is? And you could become fearful, like, am I missing God's plan for my life? God wants you to know His will. He's doing everything He can to reveal His will to you. You don't have to fear, you be fearful and today, what I want to do is share with you, these are the verses that just jump-started my entire walk with the Lord. Now, I was already born again, but I was just saved and stuck. I had no direction for my life. I was just doing whatever was, uh, came my way until I saw these verses. And Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto him, which is your reasonable service. 
and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And I've mentioned this uh, earlier in the week, but I was seeking God's will. I was graduating from high school, going into my first year of college, and I finally had to start making decisions for myself about what the rest of my life was going to be like. And I didn't want to do my own thing. I wanted to know God's will. In the meantime, I finished up my high school school year because that was already planned for me. I went into college and was just taking the necessary courses, you know, the foundational things to get out of the way. But for about a year and a half to two years, I had been praying, God, what's your will? And the last part of Romans 12, 2 says, you do these things, you will prove. The word prove means to make manifest to the physical senses what is the good and the acceptable and the perfect will of God. And when I saw that phrase, the perfect will of God, it's just like a neon sign with arrows pointing saying, this is the key right here. This is what you've been searching for for two years. And so, man, from 1967, that was Christmas of 1967 when I first saw this verse, all the way up until March of 1968 when I had this miracul miraculous I mean, dramatic encounter with the Lord. This is all I did was take these verses and say, God, what is a living sacrifice? How do I renew my mind? How do I not be conformed to the world? And I was just praying and asking God to help me. And then he showed up and this is what happened to me. But these verses are what changed my life. And if you are one of those that doesn't know for sure that you are exactly where God wants you to be. I believe that these are the verses that you need to be focusing on because it worked for me. God's no respecter of persons, and I believe this same thing will work for you. And if you will do the things listed in Romans 12, 1 and 2, the promise at the end of those verses is you will prove, make manifest to your physical senses the good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God. Now, I've got a lot of teaching. Those two verses... I've been meditating on these things for 56 years, and I've got enough revelation to fill multiple books like this. Believe it or not, this is a abbreviated thing. But let me just go back and show you some of the things that the Lord began to teach me through this. First of all, in chapter 12, verse 1, he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourself a living sacrifice. Did you know most people, or let me say it this way, many people would say that the reason they need to be submitted to God, committed as a living sacrifice, is because He's God and you aren't. And here's, here's God putting His thumb on you and pressuring you to submit and to yield unto Him. That's the way that it's presented a lot of times, that this is our obligation. And even though it is true that He's God and we aren't, and that He's Almighty and we aren't, and we should submit to Him, because he's so much greater. That's not the reasoning that Paul is using. He says, by the mercies of God, I am begging you, beseeching you to become a living sacrifice. So from that, the Lord began to show me that his plans for my life are better than my plans for my life. Did you know one of the reasons that people don't become a living sacrifice and just totally yield themselves to God is because they're afraid that if they turn their life over to God, he's going to ruin all of their plans, that he's going to make you poor, that he's going to do something terrible to you. I've actually had people come up to me before and say, if I submit to God and if I say, God, I'll go anywhere, I'll do anything, whatever you want, they're afraid he's going to make them a missionary to some grass hut in Africa. You know, it is true that God wants somebody to be a missionary to the people in grass hut in Africa, but I, what I've learned is that if God wants you to do something, he will put a love in your heart for what you're doing. You know, um, man, I could give you a lot, many, many personal examples on this, but I remember when the Lord first told me, one of the very first things he spoke to me was about quitting college, and this was during the height of the Vietnam War. I was going to lose money from the government if I quit college. I was getting uh, Social Security from my father's death, he died when I was 12 years old, and I was being paid $350 a month back in 1967. 
to go to school, plus I was going to lose my student deferment. I could be drafted and sent to Vietnam, plus I lost the acceptance of my family and my friends and my church. They came out against me. Uh, it cost me something to make that decision and to follow the Lord. But did you know, I, I don't know how to describe it, but there was such a peace. There was an excitement on the inside of me, even though everything in the matter, I was losing money from the government. I lost acceptance of family and friends, and uh, I was possibly going to be sent to Vietnam and could be killed. And even though all of those things were looming, I just had an excitement, a joy, a peace about what God told me to do that I had never had before. And I believe this goes along perfectly with Psalm chapter 37, verse 4, where it says, Delight yourself also in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. That doesn't mean He'll just give you anything you want because you might want something that's not of God. You might want a new mate. You might want to go rob a bank. You might want to do something. No, this is saying that when you delight yourself in the Lord, when God becomes first, you become this living sacrifice, He puts His desires in your heart. And this is one of the ways that He leads you into His will. Now, it's, it needs to be emphasized. It says, delight yourself also in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. You just can't say, well, whatever I want to do, that must be God's will. Are you delighting yourself in the Lord? This only works if you are delighting yourself in the Lord, if you have made God more important to you than anything else. When you do that, God will change the desires of your heart, and you will desire to do the right thing. You know, if you were truly born again, to, an, to a degree you've already experienced this. There are some of you that before you got born again, you were out sleeping around, you were doing drugs, alcohol, you were rebellious, you just had something in you that wanted to go out and rebel at God. And when you got born again, boom, your heart changed. And you may not have instantly got free. I've known people who got born again, but they were addicted to alcohol or addicted to smoking or addicted to drugs. And it was a process to get them free. But the difference was before they were born again, they were enjoying those things. There's pleasure in sin for a season. But when you get born again, if your heart has truly been changed, you may not be over all of your problems yet, but all of a sudden your desire changed. You may, you may not be living a very uh, victorious life right now, but if you're truly born again, you hate the way you're living and you want to do something different. Your heart has been changed. So whether you recognize it or not, that verse is coming to pass, that you have delighted yourself in the Lord and He puts His desires in your heart. And so when you are truly seeking God with all of your heart, you can do pretty much what you want to do because God has changed your desires. I've actually tricked some people before when I was trying to lead them into salvation and they said, but man, I just love alcohol or I love drugs or something. I'm not sure I could give it up. And I say, well, you know what? God will accept you just like you are. Let's just pray and ask Jesus to come into your life and to, to save you. And you, you don't have to worry about, you know, committing to give up all of these things before you get saved. Now, that's not because I believe it's okay for you to still be an alcoholic or a drug addict, but it's based on this principle that when you commit your life to the Lord, He'll change your heart and you won't want to do those things. I've actually told people before, I said, you know what? I commit all of the adultery that I want to. And I had, I had one interpreter in Germany. He just stopped and he, he wouldn't interpret that because he didn't, but the next statement was, I don't want to do that. God has changed my heart and I do not want to commit adultery because I love God and I love my wife. And so when you get born again, God literally changes the desires of your heart. And this is one of the ways that you can follow the leading of the Lord. So this is what Paul is saying right here. He says, I'm beseeching you by the mercies of God. God is not going to do something to hurt you. This thought that if I commit my life to God, I'll never have any joy, I'll never have any peace, I'll never have any money, I'll never succeed, that's a lie. God wants you to succeed. God wants to prosper you more than you want to prosper. 
Psalms chapter 35, verse 27 says, Yea, let all those who favor my righteous cause say continually, Let God be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. God is pleased when you prosper. He is not going to sit there and put you down. Religion teaches that preachers need to be poor and they need to be uh, second-class citizens. I actually had a guy one time, I had somebody give me a... uh, van that was one of these extended vans. And I mean, it was tripped out. It had everything on it. It had the rope lighting inside. It was really, really, really nice. And I went one time and I put a a, uh, blanket or something in the back because I needed some hay for my horses. And I was coming through town. Anyway, I put this blanket down and I had them load a bale of hay in this really nice tripped out van. And the person who was loading the hay for me, when he saw inside of that van, he says, wow, this is awesome. I've never seen a van like this. And he says, what do you do for a living? And I told him, I'm a minister. And he just immediately changed. And he says, ministers are not supposed to have something this nice. And see, that's what a lot of people think, that if you commit your life to the Lord, you're never going to have anything nice. But that's not true. Man, God delights in the prosperity of his servant. God will bless you. But I've had people that are fearful that if I yield to God, I'll never amount to anything. Nothing good is ever going to happen. Paul is saying, I'm beseeching you because of the mercies of God that you yield yourself. I truly believe that God's plans for you are better than your plans for yourself. They may be different. You may be wanting to be the next rock star and have just millions and billions of dollars and people you know, come into your concerts and stuff. And that may not be God's will for you at all. But I can guarantee you that whatever God's will is will be much better and it won't have any of the negative side effects, all of the drugs and the dope and the sexual promiscuity and people dying at young age and not able to hold a marriage together. God's plans for you are better than your plans for yourself. You know, if the Lord hadn't intervened in my life, I was headed to being a school teacher. And I'm not against school teachers. Everybody in my family has been a school teacher. So school teachers, that's a great thing to do. But that's where I was headed. And did you know now I do have a Bible school and I am teaching people and not just one class. I've got like 9,000 people at any one time going through our Bible college. And so in a sense, I'm, I'm doing those same things, but on steroids. And it's affecting people not just with natural truth, but spiritual truth. And we're on television and we're touching a potential of over 6 billion people a day through television. Did you know God's plans for me are better than my plans for myself? And when I first came back from Vietnam, I got a job working in the public school system. My mother was a supervisor. And uh, so I got a job uh, delivering uh, videos tapes, reel-to-reel tapes to schools and things. And I would splice and edit those and do stuff. And the guy that I worked for liked me enough that he offered me a job that would have been a guaranteed salary, which I didn't have at that time. And it had retirement benefits and health benefits and all of these kind of things. And he said it even had, you know, he was just giving me all this list of stuff. And he says, so, but I have to have a five-year commitment from you minimum in order to put you into this position. And you know what? God had just shown me that he had called me into the ministry. And temporarily, I was working for the school system, but that was, I knew it was temporary and I couldn't commit to five years. That would have gone against what God's plans were. And I knew that God's plans for me were better. And so when I told my mother about that, man, she thought, this is God, because here you are, a college dropout, you have nothing going for you, and you're going to get a guaranteed salary with retirement and benefits. And she just thought, boy, this is God, you need to take it. But see, it was contrary to what God had spoken to me. And I believe that God's plans were better than my plans for myself. And so I turned him down. And I look back at that, And now I am so glad (laughs) that I turned him down. I don't even remember what the salary was and what all the benefits were, but I can guarantee you where I am is a thousand times better than anything they could have offered me. It may look like from where you are 
right now that if you were to become this living sacrifice, run up a white flag and just yield yourself to God, that whatever plans and whatever success you've obtained up to this point, that you're going to lose it all. But I tell you, it's not like that. Because I'm asking you from the, by the mercies of God, because I know God's a good God, because I know God delights in the prosperity of His servant, because I know that God's plans for you are better than any plans that you could ever come with, up with on your own. I'm beseeching you by the mercies of God to become a living sacrifice. Man, that's awesome. You know, I know that God is speaking to a lot of people right now that you know God has something more for you than what you've got. You know in your heart that the way you're living, just getting up, going to work, coming home, watching TV, going to bed, getting up and repeating, do all over again, that you're on this treadmill and you know that there's something more than what you're experiencing, but you're fearful about just yielding yourself completely to God. You're fearful of what He's going to ask for you, from you. I'm telling you that God is a good God. His plans for you are nothing but good. You will enjoy God's plans for yourself more than the plans that you have for yourself. Plus, there won't be all of the negative side effects, all of the burden and pressure on you to try and produce it. If you are doing your own thing, you are going to have to do it on your own steam and own power. But when you get into what God has called you to do, there is a supernatural flow. There is an anointing. There is an ability that enables you to do things with supernatural ability. It takes the pressure off of you. I'm just promising you that some of you are looking at this all wrong. I believe that God is speaking directly to people today and asking you to just yield and surrender to Him. And you know what? You may be in exactly where God wants you to be, but you need to know that. You need to know that it's God and not just you and circumstances that have led you to it. It's possible that you are where God wants you to be, but you need to know it. You need to have that witness beyond any shadow of a doubt. And I believe that all of this teaching that I'm doing and the things I'm sharing with you, it will help you to know that. It's one thing to just stumble into the things of God accidentally, but to know that you are where God wants you to be that's priceless. There is a peace and a satisfaction and a joy that comes into your life when you are doing what God calls you to do that you can't get any other way. There may be people watching this today that you want this supernatural peace and you want this joy and you want this satisfaction, but it's over here where God called you to be and you're here. The problem is that you, you're too much here. You aren't all there. Amen. I've got a great teaching on this about Elijah from 1 Kings chapter 17. And God sent God's provision not to where Elijah was, but where he told him to go. It may be that the reason you aren't seeing the provision is because you aren't all there. You're too much here. You need to go there where God told you to go. Anyway, I'm out of time today, but I will continue this next week. We're going to go into this for multiple weeks. I've got this 290-page book that we are offering for a donation of any amount. I am asking you to give because it's a large book. It cost us money to put it out. If nobody gave, we couldn't do that. We'll probably put out 100,000 copies. So give what you can. This little booklet, this brief summary, is available as a free gift. And then we have CDs, DVDs, USBs, and even study guides. Our announcer will give you all of that information and please call or write and receive these materials today. Andrew is offering his new booklet, How to Find, Follow, and Fulfill God's Will as his free gift to you today. This offer is limited to one free booklet per household and is available in the US, UK, Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free booklet. Andrew's complete series, How to Find, follow and fulfill God's will is available as a book and as a newly released CD album, TV DVD album, or as a USB made from our daily television broadcast. This teaching is also available as three comprehensive study guides. 
The full series is available as three individual teachings, how to find, how to follow, and how to fulfill God's will. These teachings are available as DVD albums or as a complete USB recorded live from a ministry event. Each of these valuable resources are available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. We want to remind you of Andrew's Living Commentary software. The Living Commentary includes more than 50 years of Andrew's Bible study notes and personal encounters with God and is available as a web-based software that you can access by computer or any mobile device. Get Andrew's Living Commentary today. Go to our website at awmc.ca to see all the ways you can get these products. You can call the Andrew Womack Ministries Canada Helpline Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time at 647-348 2220 to order. Harris is taking it to the next level in Canada. We are raising up leaders in the body of Christ by equipping students to stand on the word and walk in their calling. I love Karis because it prioritizes the word and that's what changes you. We stand on the word. Karis is a life changer. I have grown so much in the area that I know that God has called me to. If you would like to be a part of this, go to our website at charisbiblecollege.ca to find out more. I want to make you aware that we have what we call our Heritage Giving Community, and this is for people who want to give an end-of-life gift to the ministry. You know, many of you have just been giving and giving, and one of the ways to give is in your will to put the ministry in there and take your assets at the end of your life and use it to promote the gospel. And so we now have this heritage giving community that we have put together. And if you're interested in doing something like that, I'd encourage you to contact us. We'll have all the information on the screen. And this is just a way of you taking the blessing that God has given you and putting it to work even after it's time for you to go and be with the Lord. You'll be blessed. created with a purpose, written in the heart of God long before you were born. He is calling you to find it. You were born for such a time as this, to be a disciple, to leave this world behind and follow him designed for a destiny, one that only you can fulfill. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. We want to help you to know God experience his unconditional love, to be equipped and empowered to become a world changer.